You know, Matt, I have a deep appreciation for historic firearms. Absolutely, I love the history behind firearms. And I really like the idea of taking a historic firearm and modernizing it. Not, not sure I'm following. Yeah, you should be, because today we're gonna be talking about the top five lever guns that you can purchase in 2023. Welcome back, everybody. Clint here today with Classic Firearms. We've got Matt back with us. What's up, everybody? And yeah, you may or may not have already heard this in another video. I lost my voice. I don't know how I woke up. It was gone, but hey, I'm here. So that's cool. Yay, Clint's here, all right. <laughs> but hey, we're gonna have a fun video today talking all about lever guns. Awesome, man, I love lever guns. Old yes. fashioned historical rifles. Yeah. You know, like Sharps, Martini Henry. Well, kind 1895 of. Winchester. Yeah, well, kind of. We're gonna be talking about ones that are a little bit more modern, a little bit more readily available. <sighs> all, right. all right. But we can start with number five being the Winchester 1873. Absolutely, definitely. Gotta be on the list. The <laughs> yes. gun that won the West. Absolutely, now the Winchester 1873 is legendary just for that. Winchester marketed this lever gun as the gun that won the West because every cowboy known to man was seen with a single action army and well, his Winchester 1873. I mean, again, and they offered it in all sorts of different calibers as they, well. They did. Winchesters are all available in tons of different calibers now. I always think that, again, looking at the historical side, how lever actions moved from basically all being rim fires yeah. into center fire and then getting more and more powerful. And Winchester really was a driving, you know, developer in getting, you know, much more powerful and usable cartridges into lever action rifles. Right. Again, just awesome and yes you can still purchase winchester 1873s today you can find originals all over the place but be prepared to spend about like ten thousand dollars or more <laughs> or yeah. more depending yeah. but yes winchester still makes new 1873s uh but unfortunately these aren't going to be the ones that you know are made here in the u.s and things like that right no nope. now winchester moved their production to japan so they're made in the moroku factory but uh you know they're still the same design same yeah. reliable rifle and just a heck of a lot of fun to shoot. Yeah, and you're also gonna get again that Winchester quality, so it's not like you're gonna be, you're not gonna be compromising anything. That's right. So anyway, Winchester 1873, the gun that won the West is our number five, and let's roll into our number four pick. Our next option is pretty impressive, coming from Brazil, mm -hmm. and this is an affordable option if you wanna get yourself a 357 lever gun, the Rossi R92, which is based off of the Winchester 1892, right? That's right, and the Winchester 1892 is itself a scaled-down model of the 1886, but what really makes, I think, the Rossi really cool is, again, it is a great introductory price point, and it's got different options for barrel length and caliber, so you have, like, three different caliber options, uh, 38, 357, uh, 45 Colt, and 44 Magnum, and you have 16, 22, or 24 inch barrel options, as well as you know different sights and finishes, and it's really cool. Oh yeah, just overall, it's a fantastic gun, and the and the Winchester 1892 model also is super popular. If you guys remember the old TV series, The Rifleman, he had a modified 1892 that every time he would cock it, mm -hmm. it would go bang. He had it modified so that way he didn't actually have to pull the trigger. That way he could shoot it as fast as he wants. Kind of like the idea of a slam fire shotgun. Exactly, yeah. but it's a, it's a set screw that ultimately pulls the trigger for you. Hey. Which is pretty cool. And then of course, that was one of John Wayne's favorites also for all of his Westerns, mm -hmm. was the 1892 Winchester, which again is pretty easily identifiable from that top extraction, which is something you just don't see a whole lot of now. No. Nope. And is pretty cool. And of course, again, that large loop, right? Mm -hmm. Now the Rossi is really neat because obviously, Thread and barrel. Hey. And we do have a can at the end of it there, the Silencer Co. Suppressor House, there you That's go. That's right. Coming back, you also have Buckhorn side options or the Ghost Ring side option with the Picatinny rail. You've also that, got that gray laminate stock and fore end, which is super awesome. And then with the oversized lever, the oversized lever loop, you'll also see that they have it braided here so that way it protects your hand from any harm if you're really quickly cycling this yeah, thing. Don't want to hurt yourself. Uh, I think this is a great example though of how lever actions have moved into the modern world. So yeah. you've got that nice rear peep sight, nice bright uh, fiber optic, fiber optic yeah. sight on the front, and you can mount an optic. So, you know, if you're looking for a red dot or something, you can get some really fast shooting done. Oh, absolutely. And I think we'll show you guys a couple more here in just a couple moments about some really modernizing the classic lever gun. Our number three pick is one of my personal favorite rifles. Mm -hmm. 
the Henry 4570 all weather. This is the Picatinny model with or without the P Picatinny. It's freaking awesome. But Ryan and I really got to run these at the, uh, the Gundies this past year, right? Yep. And it was pretty much like, hey, let's see who can run this gun the fastest and you can shoot this gun hella fast. This thing just runs with practice. Such, with, with, I mean, sure. Mm -hmm. you, you, once you start to learn the rhythm and how to pull the trigger and, you know, really just, you know, you, you get it. You yeah. know what I mean? So at the end of the day, this thing is just fantastic. And the fact that they pretty much designed this gun to be all weather mm -hmm. makes it pretty cool too. They're pretty much saying this is you're going to be trekking through the woods and bear country and snow and everything else. You're not going to have to worry about rust and material starting to degrade on you. You just got yourself a good, tough, 4570 so lever gun. That's actually kind of the thing that I connect with it maybe the most is, you know, there's this guy, some of us who are a little bit older, um, not saying I'm old, but a little older, might remember Jeff Cooper, uh, really well-known firearms uh, instructor and, and a Marine. And he promoted this idea of a scout rifle, right? Yeah. And the idea is the scout rifle, uh, it emphasized on being able to uh, carry it around, you know, comfortable, portable rifle that had sufficient power to make hits out to a reasonable distance, usually say, three, 400 yards and use a low power kind of magnified optic. And typically we think of those as bolt action rifles, but you know, this seems to kind of be Henry's take on the scout rifle yeah. where it's something that you can carry in the field. You're not gonna have to worry about, you know, it being damaged. It's a tough rifle. Yeah. And with that Picatinny rail on there, you can definitely mount that kind of a, you know, a magnified optics where you can get out to those, you know, respectable distances. Right. We're not talking long range precision, but with 45, 70, you know, yeah. take down, uh, take down, you know, Elk. Any, anything <laughs> that you could reasonably expect in, in North America short of a moose, right? Right, yeah, exactly. I mean, even, I mean, if you got your shot placement right, I think 4570 might have the capability. Uh, but on top of that, they also keep in mind too, like if you are gonna be in that inclement weather, gloves, things like that, you have a slightly oversized handle. They didn't wanna go too big on this mm -hmm. because you might be trekking through the woods and stuff like that. It's not your ranch rifle. Right. It's, it's your scout rifle like you're talking about. So yeah, just all in all, really great design. Ghost ring sight with the standard, uh, just a front sight post. And again, this being the Picatinny model, like Matt's already talked about, you can throw on a magnified optic, dot, whatever. I mean, I threw on a Swamp Fox Raider prism optic just yeah. to see how it would do. And it did very well. Hey. <laughs> and of course, I've got the cuff back here also that hold my extra rounds of 4570. And this one also, the side gate, which is pretty cool. So you don't have to take out the tube, you know, to load this thing. You just got your side gate that you can just load right in. So I think a lot of us, you know, who focus on kind of those basic rules of, of gun safety, I've always felt a little uh, iffy about taking oh, the tube out because yeah. your hand ends up in front of the muzzle. So the side gate's definitely a fantastic option. Yeah, I think so. And to quickly load it too, instead of having to, especially if you're out in the field and you got. You, know, you don't want to deal with you don't want to put parts. debris and stuff in there too right yeah. exactly so there you have it the henry 4570 all weather side gate picatinny model that you see right here that matte finish even though it's a matte finish get it it's not your favorite right uh, I mean, we got some better ones maybe coming down the line okay, okay. but hey if it prevents rust and, and corrosion and deterioration. It's doing its job. It's doing its job. That's right. Let's roll into our number two pick. All right, guys. So our number two looks pretty similar to our number three, but <laughs> th bit. this is the Marlin 1895 SBL. And so I really like the kind of finish on this a little bit better than that matte finish we had you, on the handle. I like that this one just looks a little bit pretty. <sighs> it screams at me. It's, it's so good. Uh, I also like, you know, you got this nice wood grain as opposed to just the flat black on the sock uh, on the Henry. But uh, it's got a lot of similar features. So you see, you do have the ghost ring rear sight. You've got this nice long Picatinny rail so you can mount in, you know, either a red dot or a magnified optic or something like that. It's got the side gate for loading. Uh, and it's the only rifle on our list certified to take down T-Rexes. <laughs> right, thanks Chris Pratt. Now I want to mention something really quick though, because if you look really closely, there's a grain in there. There is grain. Okay, yeah, it's it's just go. a really dark, so, yeah. dark stain. Yeah, now you did make a good point though that these are very similar. If you guys would like to see a comparison between the Henry All Weather 4570 to the Marlin 1895 SBL 4570, let us know down in the comment section below. They both have the side gates. Um, this one I know, I think they advertise four rounds mm -hmm. in the tube, but I can get five rounds in this thing. You maybe not supposed to because you're compressing that spring, but it's me, I'm gonna do it, right? And then I think this one's six plus one, yep. you know, so I think it's got one more as far as capacity goes. Now the newer models also have a threaded barrel. This is an older one. Ruger has since taken over Marlin. Mm -hmm. uh, so this one doesn't have the threaded barrel and it. it's got a couple other differences, but ultimately still inherently the same gun. Mm -hmm. And it does have that beautiful grain on it. It does have that beautiful stainless finish. Also the Picatinny running up top. And 
I will say this though, I do prefer the sights, the ghost ring and the front sight mm -hmm. post of the Marlin over the eight, uh, over the Henry, simply because this guy back here is a little bit thicker. I think mm -hmm. it might be able to handle a little bit more abuse. Yep. Ask me, right? I, I abuse the crap out of my guns. And then you also have a little bit of a white mark right up front uh, to give you a reference point. This one's a solid black, so you don't really have much of a reference point. So you can more easily lose that against a dark target right, versus yeah. you got that nice contrast. And that's all it takes. Is that a big deal? No, because I can take some white nail polish and, and do the same thing. It's not no. that big of a deal. And there's aftermarket sights that are available. Never feel like you can't touch your guns. They're your guns. Right. So if something's gonna you know improve your performance, a little red nail polish or something, easy, go for it. Easy enough. But like I said, both of them have different takes on the loop levers. You'll notice on the SBL, it's a little bit larger here. So mm -hmm. if you're wearing thicker gloves, things like that, it's a little bit more subtle in the Henry. But like, again, let me know down in the comments section, would you like to see these kind of square off against each other? I think that'd be a pretty fun video. I think so, yeah. So anyway, that's our number two, but we do have some honorable mentions. My honorable mention is pretty much any 22 lever gun. Okay. I grew up with a Henry 22 lever gun, and this is now my new love this is actually the 24 inch threaded barrel frontier model 22 winchester magnum rimfire 22 mm -hmm. wmr which is a 24 inch barrel at a suppressor on this thing which i'm working on and yes it's ridiculously long only holds eight rounds but you can imagine how much fun this is going to be i've always said the most fun shooting you'll ever have is playing with a 22. there's just yes. something that's so awesome you get a little, a couple little metal plates. Yeah. You just ding, ding, ding. ding. Oh, yeah. And then the added benefit of it being the 22 Winchester Magnum, mm -hmm. uh, you're this is the ideal varmint gun. Yeah, if you ask me, especially at a can at the end. Oh my God, it's I love it. So I like that. I agree with you. You know, 22s are a bunch of yeah, fun. Whether it be long, long rifle, rifle Magnum, short, whatever. Whatever. It's fun. Uh, I'm gonna go a little bit different again. I'm, I'm most of my knowledge of lever actions is more of a historical thing. So my honorable mention is the 1895 Winchester. Uh, specifically because it was available in some much larger calibers like 760 by 54R. You gotta love you the Russian contract rifles. Fed with a stripper clip, it had a bayonet lug on it. That is an awesome rifle. So it's a Winchester. It's a Winchester. Chambered in 762 by 54R. Yep. With a bayonet attachment. With a bayonet lug, it had, you could feed it with stripper clips. That is actually really cool. That's super cool. Well, why, don't you, why don't you find one of those, man? Swipe card on it. We could use that on the channel here. I feel like you could write tax right off. Well, uh, yeah, so <laughs> they're kind of expensive because nobody does make them nowadays. So, I mean, it doesn't really go along with our modern guns here, but it is like a dream gun. What, what have you seen them go for? I know you've like, looked. Like three to $5,000, which is pretty pricey for me. Dude, just go ask Ben. <laughs> Easy day. <laughs> We are, aren't we like offering up like $15,000 guns? So, I mean, what's three? You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, those are our honorable mentions and our number two. Let's go ahead and roll into our number one pick. Our number one pick, you probably think it is going to be the Henry uh, big boy brass models, oh, you know, the golden so boys. Good, yeah. They're beautiful. But no, we want something really modern, something really capable, and something really ridiculous. Actually, this isn't it at all. I'm just going to set that right over there. What is it, Matt? So we're gonna go with the Marlin 336. Brand new, reintroduced this year. It's just the epitome of what we think of when you think of a lever action rifle. 30, 30 caliber, classic deer cartridge. Just, it's got the classic looks and design. The stock's a gorgeous wood. Yeah, the Marlin 336 classic is pretty much everything that you want in a 30, 30 lever action. Still yeah. has the side gate, just beautiful look and everything. And it's just like, you know what? If I just want an everyday lever gun, mm -hmm. it's hard to beat that. So one of the things I think is interesting about lever guns is when you kind of look at what caliber you're going to select, right? Because so many of them are available in pistol calibers, like 38, 357, 44 Magnum. Others are available in these really big rifle cartridges, just like 4570. Yeah. Right. 3030, though, it just kind of hits that sweet spot in the middle where, you know, this is a great general purpose, everyday rifle. And, you know, if, if you're not looking to specialize in, in one kind of shooting or another, that's, I think, the golden ticket. Yeah, my Henry 3030, it, it is such a classic. I mean, it just feels good to shoot. Mm -hmm. And 100 yards, super accurate with the big, with the, you know, just a, you know, what do they call the big horn sights? Buckhorn sights. Buckhorn, I said big horn. Buckhorn sights, dude. It's just it's so easy to run. And that 3030 just feels really, really good. No, I haven't run the Marlin 336 personally. Mm -hmm. They just released it this year, March of this year, right? Correct. Classic model. So I'm really eager to get my hands on it and maybe, you know, make a tactical model or something, you know, I don't know. So, but, you know, yeah. something with that much history, brand new back in the market, right. that had to be our number one pick. 
and that's what it is. So guys, let us know down in the comment section below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Are you tired of hearing my voice like this? Maybe it'll come back. I honestly don't know. You should know. bring back the stash, remember that? Oh yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. Maybe, maybe that'll work well with the voice, I don't know. But uh, anyway, we actually gotta raise the camera up a little bit, so quit showing my double chin. That would make me really happy. Until then, the beard stays. But we'll leave it off there, guys. So we'll see you down in the comment section below all about some of your favorite lever guns. Did we miss some? Do you really wish Matt talked about the Martini Henry? Again. Yes. Yeah, but maybe we'll save that for a, a different top five. Was there, was there something you thought we just absolutely missed? Just totally blew it. But let us know anything. Uh down in the comments, right? That's right. And guys, we'll leave it off there. Don't forget to head on over to CF Contest to see exactly what we've got going on because, well, there's some pretty cool stuff that are is, well featured at CF Contest. Like that gun, or 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 that. There's, there's a lot of cool things you don't want to miss out on. And guys, as always, we appreciate you and your viewership. God bless. And we'll see you next time at Classic Firearms.